Okay, Louise, um, if we can let people in, that'll be great, thank you. Okay, welcome to the University of Manchester tech careers for non-tech graduates. <clears throat> this is part of Future Fortnight, so we've had a series of events over two weeks um, and this session forms part of that. My name is Penny, I'm one of the career consultants uh, in the Central Careers team and I'm joined with me today by my colleague Louise Croft. Louise will be behind the scenes managing the chat function um, this is a way to communicate with us if there's any issues. And of course, if you have any questions for our panellists today, please uh, use that facility. I will be introducing some employers uh, as we go through this today's session. We're together today for about an hour. The session is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel in the coming days. So if there's anything you want to watch back, um, please feel free to, to do that. Um, in terms of uh, what we're covering today, uh, we've just got a few slides to share with you. So I'm going to just sort of do a general overview of the sector. Um, I'm then going to introduce and bring, on, bring uh, uh, on board our, our guests, our guest uh, employers today. And you can see they're from uh, right across the tech, sort of tech sector. So we've got uh, FDM, IBM and Boohoo Technology. And um, there have been a couple of issues with our employers joining today. So I'm hoping that they're, they're managing to join the session as I speak, uh, speak now. OK, so um, in terms of as I said, communicating with us, please use the chat function. Um, if you can direct any questions uh, to where it says everyone on the options, um, they can then be picked up and we can we can post, we can discuss those with, with our employers um, towards the end of the session. Okay. Uh, so a couple of things just before we get started on an overview of the sector. I would be really grateful if you could just register your attendance. So there is a QR code there and a bit.ly link. Um, uh, Louise will post the bit.ly link in the chat. So please do register for this event and we will ensure that the slides are made available to you uh, following, following this session. So please register. So what I'm going to do now is just talk for a few minutes just about the tech sector. So as I said, this session is predominantly for uh, students who don't have um, STEM sort of discipline backgrounds. So whether you're a psychology student, English, uh, art student, et cetera, but you're thinking about perhaps entering the tech sector, but you're not sure what the tech sector looks like, what sort of roles are available. I'm going to be covering some of that today as well as some of the employers um, who quite like our graduates uh, and, and do, and do recruit um, non-STEM disciplines. So in terms of the sector itself, um, it's, it's a great sector to enter. It's very buoyant. Um, you can see there that there's been a lot of growth in the last two years. Um, so just part of those around 11% growth. Um, it employs probably uh, sort of one of the biggest sectors in terms of employment, employing people. So there's around three million people um, working in the tech sector. And that's right across uh, various roles. And it counts for about one, one in 10 jobs advertised in the UK. So, you know, it is a sector that is, as I say, buoyant. Um, it's done really well during the pandemic. Uh, as you're aware yourself, probably you've been maybe been using things online that you wouldn't normally use. I know, for example, we're using a lot of digital platforms now to deliver uh, talks like this and, and to deliver appointments. So um, tech has, has very much become part of our lives and there are lots of opportunities out there uh, for you if you are interested in this sector. So what, what, where can you work? What's out there? The tech sector is really fast moving. It's very dynamic. As well as the larger organizations, there are lots of SMEs, so that's small and medium-sized enterprises. And um, you've also got startups. So they tend to be maybe run by one or two people initially. Um, and they're really keen on taking uh, new graduates um, and helping you, helping them 
uh, grow and develop the company. So there's great opportunities out there. But in terms of IT and the tech sector, there's three sort of main areas. So I've covered those there. You've got tech companies. So they deal specifically with programming, consultancy, networking, etc. You've got tech innovators. So these are companies that are at the forefront um, of IT. So they're doing the research, the development. And I've put a couple of companies on there for, as, a, as a point of reference. And then everyone else. So uh, the university, for example, has a very big financial department, uh, sorry, technical department, digital team. So every time you're, you have an issue with connectivity or there's something uh, on campus that go, goes wrong, perhaps with a uh, device, we've got a great digital team to support us. But we've also got people working on major programs. So IT is, is really everywhere, not just in those tech companies, but right across the NHS, universities, uh, public sector, etc. So, you know, do think about um, other kinds of organisations if you do decide to go into this line of work. OK, so what roles are out there? Tech is very broad, actually. There are lots of different things out there for you to do and lots of different skills that you can develop to help you specialise in some of these areas. So I've got up there software development, systems analyst, network engineer. This is very much around building and developing program systems or applications to help meet, meet the needs of businesses. Um, business analyst and IT consultant project manager. This tends to be around helping the client to understand their needs and then working with technical specialists to design or build uh, particular programs or solutions. Uh, quality assurance and user, user testing IT support. This tends to be around, you know, does it do what it's supposed to do and, and kind of figuring out ways to kind of make things better if, they, if they're not working that well. Uh, E-commerce, this is how sort of very much about shopping online, how people shop online um, and, you know, do we are we getting them to the right pages, to the right kind of uh, resources that they need in order to have a good experience. So there are lots of different roles from the kind of what they call the back end. So that kind of uh, behind the scenes, it's happening there right up to the kind of front end of that user experience. And again, some of that will interest people with different kind of skills um, and whether you want to kind of work uh, more technically with people or more with the customer. OK, so I want to just highlight some of the, the kind of employers where our graduates go on to, to work uh, following uh, a degree at University of Manchester. So some of these, I've, I've kind of picked the bigger brand names because they tend to be popular, but actually we have a lot of students working with small and medium sized enterprises. So please don't feel like, because they're not on here, you know, that you can't consider them. Manchester is a great place. Um, there's, a, there's a real hub of activity around SMEs um, and, and startups as well. So do have a look at those as well if you are thinking about um, maybe working with a smaller company. It doesn't have to be one of these big employers. But I guess I've put those on there because they might be brands that you recognise. OK, so how to gain experience and market yourself effectively. Here's a couple of tips from me, but I'm really interested to hear from our employers really soon on their advice on how to kind of make yourself more employable in the tech sector when you don't have perhaps technical sort of qualifications. So one of the things I would suggest is kind of looking at your CV. And if you have a LinkedIn profile, just getting that really polished up and highlighting perhaps the skills that you've got that are relevant, um, particularly the transferable sort of stuff that you've done. If you have got some technical skills or, or te uh, digital skills, so things like um, Excel, if you've been using, I don't know, uh, programs such as SPSS in your in your part of your course, you know, you can include those. They are digital skills um, that you know help you uh, convince an employer that you that you're a suitable candidate. So do think about just getting that CV up to date, but really highlighting any kind of technical skills that you've got. Connect with alumni on LinkedIn, so people that work in the sector. And actually, I've just been speaking to our employers this morning um, 
who are all on LinkedIn, by the way. So if you want to reach out to our employers uh, once they've introduced themselves, please do do, do that. Um, they're happy to accept connection requests. And it's a good way for you to start building your network and getting information about the sector, finding out about uh, perhaps the particular pathways or roles that you're interested in. Reach out to smaller firms and startups to ask about vacancies. So follow them on social media. Um, with startups and smaller companies, you may be doing lots of different activities and tasks in, in your role. So it may not purely be just a digital role. Um, so, so be open to that and be flexible. Um, you can obviously, obviously undertake um, some coding courses, some CPD, continued professional development. So there's lots of free courses out there that you can have a look at undertaking um, in coding or programming skills or also through your course. Um, we have the interdisciplinary modules that you can take. So they are modules you can pick from across the university and integrate those into your course. I think developing digital marketing skills through social media, most people are on some form of social media. So, you know, push yourself a little bit more, maybe go to a different uh, kind of platform and, and think about what that experience is like. What can you gain from that? Can you promote yourself through that platform in terms of um, being perhaps a potential intern for the summer or a graduate? Try to think about um, securing work experience. So try to get some uh, kind of insight into to what uh, working in a company might might be like. So you can approach companies directly. They will often advertise vacancies. So do do kind of keep an eye out for those opportunities. And of course, use Career Connect, um, which is our central platform uh, for advertising opportunities. And then, of course, if you feel confident and you want to kind of give stuff a try, things like hackathons and uh, IT or tech competitions are really great just to kind of participate in um, and get experience. And obviously, you can put this sort of stuff on your CV too. One thing I would really encourage you to do if you haven't done this already, and Louise will pop the link for this in the chat, but you have got the QR code there, is using our discovery tool. So this is a brand new um, audit, if you like. So you can go through a series of questions, and I just did this actually myself the other day. You go through a series of questions talking about, you know, how you use IT, how confident you are, um, and what it does, it produces a report and that report identifies your areas of strength, so things that you're good at. And that, I think, will help you think about putting things on your CV and selling those skills to your employer. And what it also does is gives you um, ideas for development. So things you can do to help improve your skill set. And actually, there's a number of activities that you can do following that. So, you know, for example, if it's said um, you need to get, you know, maybe more experience dealing in webinars or presentations, there's actual activities that you can go in and do, like an extension task, if you like, after you've done that, that audit. So I really would encourage you to, to kind of have a look at your own kind of skill set, where you are at the moment in terms of your kind of digital literacy um, and capability and, and have a go at this. And, and as I say, it can be used to help support your CV too. Okay, so finding out more. There's quite a few links here. I'm not gonna share them right now, but we are gonna share the slides afterwards. But if you did want to take a sort of a further look into um, getting more experience or looking at online courses, there's lots of stuff here that you can definitely go away and have a look at. And just once again, just a reminder, if you haven't already registered for today's event, would you be kind enough to do that? As I say, the slides will be sent to anyone that has registered um, for today's session. So um, I just wanted to say there, really important that you go out, you try things out, explore, try and prepare as much as you can before you start applying for opportunities, so getting the experience. And then when you are ready to apply, please remember that we are here to help you and support you. So at that point, I'm going to um, stop sharing and I'm going to uh, introduce our um, uh, uh, employers from the tech sector to, to join in and uh, just introduce themselves and talk to you a little bit about their organisation, um, about some of the perhaps opportunities that are available. So I'm going to start off with Hannah from IBM. Hannah, could, could we kick off with you if that's okay? 
Yeah, sure. So, hi everyone. Um, I'm Hannah. I am a software engineer based in the Manchester lab at IBM. Um, I graduated from the University of Manchester four years ago now um, after studying computer science there. Um, I currently work in storage virtualization at IBM and my work involves um, adding new features to our systems and maintaining our existing systems. Just unmute myself there. Thanks so much, <laughs> Hannah. Thanks for the introduction. And you are joined today by, I can't see her. Where has she gone? Hey, it's there me, you it's are, Christina. Christina. Thank you, Christina. <laughs> hey, um, so my name is Christina. I graduated last year from the University of Manchester too, and I've joined IBM since then. And I'm currently a technical consultant, and my current role is the business analyst in a public sector project. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Christina. Uh, so we have Christiana uh, joining us as well today. So Christiana, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, thanks, Benny. Um, yeah, my name is Christiana. Um, I am a graduate recruiter, university partnerships consultant at FTM Group. Um, I've been now uh, in this role for a year and a half. Um, before that, I did my master's degree in social psychology and before that, my um, bachelor's degree in social psychology again. Um, and uh, I'm also here today with my colleague, Stefan. Um, so we both represent the FTM group and really excited to talk to you about our roles and career in tech. Great, thank you so much, Christiana. And then Stefan, do you want to say hello? Yeah, so um, as Christiana said, I work with her FDM group. I'm also a graduate recruiter and in the university partnership team as well. I'm from Liverpool. I went to Glasgow University where I studied French and politics. I graduated in 2020 in the middle of the pandemic, fun. And um, then I've moved into recruitment, which is why I'm here today, so yeah. Lovely. Thank you so much, Stefan. And thank you to all of the panelists uh, for, for sharing there. And um, we have got one person that doesn't seem to have been able to join us today. So apologies for that. Uh, that was a representative from Boohoo. Um, so what I will do, I'll chase that up. And if there's any slides that, that Boohoo wanted to share, I will get that uh, sent out with, with these set of slides today. Okay, so um, I guess it would be really useful to kind of get a little bit of an overview of the each of the organisations that are here today, and maybe just an insight into maybe some of the opportunities, uh, and kind of I guess any advice that you might want to share. So we'll, we'll, we'll go start back with IBM if that's okay. So um, uh, I don't know, Christina, do you want to perhaps start off just sharing a little bit about a bit more about the organisation? Uh, and do you have offices in Manchester, is that right? Yeah, we have Man offices in Manchester and London. That's where most of our graduates are based in. Uh, okay. But we also have offices elsewhere, right? So we have, um, sorry, I'm trying to share my screen at the same time. Um, Hannah, do you mind taking over the question? Yeah, no worries. Um, so yeah, we have offices based in, um, yeah, in Manchester, in London and various other places in the UK. Um, also in, in Hursley, which is near to Southampton. Um, we, have, uh, we have a couple of slides with this information on as well, if um, that yeah. would be more useful. Hannah, do you mind sharing your screen? Sorry, I'm having issues uh, sharing Yeah, mine. no worries. <laughs> Sorry, we should have planned this beforehand. Don't worry, that, it wouldn't be a, a kind of webinar if it didn't, didn't have some technical issue. Yeah. Uh, Hannah, you're just on mute there as well. Sorry, just yeah, the slides. I'm currently doing a lot of work with um, workshops online and the technical issues have been a nightmare. Um, sorry, I can't find the link. Um, <laughs> Just while Hannah's doing that, uh, Christina, um, in terms of your, your sort of entry into the company, how did you find out about IBM and, and what was your experience of the recruitment process? So actually I joined IBM as a placement student and we have an internal program that makes uh, becoming a graduate easier. So if there's any first year and second years here, I would encourage them looking into that because we, that's obviously it's, 
really important for us to like get to know our grads and if we have experience with them through the internship program that's obviously easier for them to apply and not only for us to get to know them but for them to understand um IBM's culture and what they want to uh what projects they want to be involved in um so yeah um my um experience was through IBM um but we also have a standard graduate opportunities track yeah great Thank you very much. Uh, Hannah, how are you getting on? Sorry, I, I think I might be having the same problem as Christina. I haven't allowed my uh, system yeah. to share screen with Zoom because <laughs> we use we actually use WebEx internally. Ah, right. Um, OK. I can, yeah, I can get it. I can get it sorted if um, maybe the the other group wants to go. Yeah, forward. I was going to yeah. say, should we kind of take over for the minute and we'll come back to you in a few moments. Is that OK? Yeah, that's fine. Sorry, right. I'll, I'll get this sorted. No worries. Um, uh, Christiana or Stefan, I'm not sure which of you wants to lead first. Uh, yeah, I can share my screen now and we can give a little introduction to students today about FTM Group. Um, just to double check, can you all see my screen now? Yes, that's great. Thank you. Perfect. Um, so yeah, um, just going to go through some um slides around who we are what we do and what we can offer to students um on our graduate program um but as we already kind of give a little introduction um my name is christiana and uh, i'm a graduate recruiting university patrick Stilton. and what that means is that um i recruit um students um graduates uh, on our graduate program so i take them through the process and i also work closely with um universities um, delivering workshops, running events uh, like this one, for example. Um, so it's um, really enjoyed that role because it gives me that chance to speak to so many um, students and graduates. Um, and uh, yeah, Stefan, if you want to um, say something about yourself as well around yeah, the role. I mean, absolutely. I mean, uh, yeah, I also obviously I'm a graduate recruiter at FCM and I really agree that the job is a really fulfilling role because a lot of our candidates we do build a really strong relationship with them. There are a few steps throughout our application process and we do like to kind of give as much guidance as we can. So it can be um, really, really rewarding, I think is the word. So yeah, it's a really great role uh, and we both enjoy it quite a lot. So yeah. Thank you. Um, and uh, just want to talk to you a bit more about who we are and what we do. So on that slide, you can see a bit more details around our business module. Um, so what we do is we recruit, train and deploy business and technical consultants. Um, so we've got three programs um, that we recruit for. Um, this is um, the Returners to Work, which is a program for people who took career uh, break and looking to go back into the working space. We also got X Forces program, uh, which is also bridging the gap between leaving the army and again, working space. And last but not least is our graduate program, um, which I assume most of you would be excited to hear more about it. Um, so actually our graduate program take larger space on, um, in our business. Um, so what we offer on our graduate program um, is um, business and technical pathway. Uh, so we've got business pathway where you can choose from different business roles. And we've also got our technical pathway where you can choose from more technical software related roles. And we're going to cover those roles in the next slide. Um, but joining our graduate program, you'll be initially trained um, six to 14 weeks. Um, we have our academies in Leeds, London and Glasgow. Um, and uh, during that training, you get um, all the skills that you need for the role that you'd be in, um, get that confidence um, before you start working on a real project. Um, so the training is fully funded um, by us um, and uh, also is now accredited by Tech Skills, which is another good thing um, to add on your CV as well when you finish the training. Um, and uh, it's run at the moment virtually. Um, and uh, as soon as you complete that training and get that confidence, then obviously you can put it into practice uh, when you be deployed on site um, with one of our clients uh, for a short or long term placement uh, for a minimum of two years. Uh, so the graduate program is two years long, plus the training six to 14 weeks. Um, and uh, it's a great opportunity for people who are interested in starting career technology um, to make that initial start. We give them obviously the training, the support, and obviously the two years of working experience in the industry directly after university. 
And after the two years, um, there's still opportunities for progression. Um, we, uh, most of our consultants um, stay with us becoming seniors um, or they make a transition and move on the client side with the program role, which is a great, another opportunity for them to progress into their career. Um, so that's what the business module looks like. Um, I just want to mention because uh, obviously the event today is mostly focusing for people who um, you know, don't have a stamp degree background. We are recruiting um, graduates and students from all degree backgrounds. So as long as you have that interest to start a career in technology, um, you're welcome to apply because we give you the training and we help you to make that start in your career and um, go into technology. So we accept all degree backgrounds. As long as you have two, two or above two, two on your bachelor's with honors degree, you're welcome to apply and join us. Um, this is just quickly to talk to you a bit more about the culture that we've got at FDM Group. Um, so um, as you can see on that slide, uh, we got like more than 95 nationalities working together as a team at FDM. Really proud to say that 52% of our UK graduates are also from Arab, Asia, back in mixed race background. And 27% of FDM graduates um, are consultants are female. Um, so we're really happy to share those numbers with you. Um, and also to touch on social mobility, 73% uh, of FDM workforce attended state school um, and 42% um, of our um, workforce were first in their family to go to university. So we really um, very um, inclusive by nature and we wanna give equal opportunities to everyone um, to start their career. And now I will pass to Stefan, who will talk to you a bit more about the roles that we recruit for. As I mentioned, we got technical and business roles. So we're just quickly going to mention the roles that we recruit for. Um, Stefan, you all right to? Absolutely. So, yeah. it. Thank you. Christina, uh, Christiana did just mention that we have two streams, kind of main streams, which is technical and business. So obviously, if you are thinking that maybe you don't want to do something too technical obviously we do work within the tech industry but we do offer business based roles as well which is a really nice way to kind of get your foot in the door and in terms of the technical roles um you can see them all here i'll give you just kind of the short pricey of what each one kind of entails um with technical operations it's all about ensuring like crucial um systems for each business are operating as they should be it's a really kind of varied role it's a quite a good way it's a good stepping off point for people who uh, have an interest in IT and maybe it's not the deepest knowledge as of yet, but it's a really good place to start. Um, business intelligence is really great for people who are good at noticing trends. It's all about using data um, to and kind of visualizing that to help decision makers in a business make decisions. Um, cloud computing is a really popular one. It kind of speaks for itself. It's just about working with the cloud systems uh, of a business and making sure they're operating as they should be. Um, Software development, again, speaks for itself. It's all about um, kind of uh, uh, filing reports and like understanding what a business needs and then being able to try and start implementing that by coding and programming. Uh, and then that's where software testers come in. So these are the people who try and, um, you know, spot the holes in maybe the uh, what the developers are creating and making sure that everything is running as best as it as it should. Um, this is for people who are kind of more maybe professional pessimists who uh, have a really detail oriented and kind of a problem solving mindset. So that can be quite a really, like a really interesting one to do. I know that Sky is a big client for that particular course actually. Um, robotics process automation, that's another uh, really fun one. It's more low coding. So even if you think, oh God, I'll never be able to do anything in that like you know the word robotics can be quite scary um it's low coding so it's a lot of kind of drag and click coding where um we're really looking for people who like again it's a lot of problem solving people who really have a curious mindset who are eager to um you know discuss with stakeholders what they can do to help them and then implement those changes by um automating process for them making their lives just easier basically if you're a, a robotics process automation 
uh, consultant, you will be everyone's best friend because you'll be taking things that they have to do manually and that they hate to do, and you'll be automating those so that they don't have to waste hours doing it. So that can be a really fulfilling one. Uh, so that's kind of the tech roles that we have. And then on the business side, project support kind of um, speak, again, I say a lot of them speak for themselves, maybe they do. Um, that kind of leads on to project management. It's all about, you know, ensuring that projects run smoothly. And um, then that kind of leads into business analysis as well. The two kind of tend to go hand in hand. Um, business analysis, again, is just about ensuring that, um, you know, everything is running as it should be. Um, and making like dealing with key decision makers of a business and kind of helping them to make the decisions that are the right ones. Again, risk regulation compliance also very much ties in with this, but it has a lot to do with kind of anti money laundering. This is more kind of uh, um, finance based. So a lot of the clients for this particular role are going to be in finance. Um, however, it does have its place in other sectors as well. Um, but it's all about um, just keeping a business safe from, you know, um, you know, even potential kind of uh, the legal action by making sure that everything is above board, basically. It, that's, again, someone who's detail oriented is more likely to excel in this kind of role. Yeah. And then in terms of the clients that we have, so we have, I think it's like about 138 across the UK, if not more, in 30 different sectors. 50% um, of those are in finance, but we do have clients from pretty much everywhere. As you can see, you know, Sky, Barclays, the Home Office, Aviva, British Airways. I don't just want to read them all as they come up, but, you know, there is a huge amount of variety there. And there is a huge demand. So, you know, it's quite good because now that the training is um, remote, as Christiana mentioned, it just means that we can kind of cover every region. So, you know, it doesn't matter where you're from, you can take part in the training. And, um, you know, we do have a huge amount of clients. So um, there's a lot of scope there to work with some really, really interesting projects, basically. Yeah. Thanks, Stefan. And uh, as we covered what we offer in our graduate programme, what are the opportunities that, you know, we recruit for and what are the clients that you be working with um, on the graduate programme? Um, and now it's time to probably say what we look for and what is the selection process for the graduate program. So as you can see on the slide, we've got six uh, steps on the selection process. Um, these are online applications, submitting online application, um, telephone call, video interview, online tests, final stage interviews. Um, so all these steps now are done virtually. Um, so the first thing that you can do maybe after this call, after this session is um, submitting an application simply via our website. Um, it's just gonna ask you a few questions and um, to upload your CV. Um, as soon as you do that, um, someone from our team, from the recruitment team will reach out to you. It could be myself, Stefan or someone else um, to arrange a telephone call. So what usually happens on that telephone call is just basically have an initial conversation around your application just to see what you're interested in. Um, it's also an equal chance for you to get to know us a bit better and ask us any questions that you might have. Um, but we check eligibilities and obviously why you're interested in joining us. And uh, at the end of that call, if you're successful, then you'll be invited to the next stage, which is completing a pre-recorded video interview. Um, so that's usually, um, you know, usually get a preparation email sent from us, helping you to prepare for the video interview and also a link with the actual, you know, video interview that you need to complete. Uh, we give you deadline to do the video interview um, and also we help you to prepare with it, we give you some guidance. The questions that we also use for that stage and also for our final stages interviews are strength-based um, questions. So these are you know, the questions that we use um, and they're mostly focusing on your strengths rather than your previous experience. Um, if you are successful at the video interview stage, then you do some online tests. Uh, and again, your recruiter will be in touch with you to help you to prepare for those. Um, there's a couple of um, tests that we send and we again give you, um, you know, three days deadline to complete the test. Um, and uh, if you're successful on the online test, then you'll be able to attend the final stages interviews, which we run on specific dates. So your recruiter again will be in touch to, um, you know, arrange a time where you'll be available to attend the final stage interviews, uh, which we uh, do via Zoom. 
um, and you will speak to, you'll be interviewed by three different people from FTM group. Um, and again, the questions are strength-based, so it will be similar to the video interview stage um, in terms of the questions that you'll be asked. Um, and if you're successful at that final stage interviews, then you'll be able to join our award-winning graduate program. Um, and I just really want to highlight here that we do provide support through all these stages. Um, we give you we give you feedback when successful, or you know, for those of you who, for those of the, our um, applicants who haven't been successful at any of the stages we still give them feedback and make sure that you know um, they have uh, the needed information so they can come back and apply again um, but yeah we do provide support for each of those stages and we welcome all degree backgrounds um, as well and now I just quickly gonna pass to Stefan again just to tell you a bit more about what we look for because I've mentioned a couple of times that we use strength-based type of questions so we um, assess you on the seven strengths um, and Stefan will be able to tell you a bit more about those seven strengths. Yeah, absolutely. So as Christiana rightfully said, um, because we don't hire based on prior experience, what we do look for in our candidates is certain strengths. So it's all about when, you know, you don't have to have done a particular thing at all, but what you do need to be able to do is exhibit that you have the strengths that we look for. And the best way to do that is by, you know, talking about the experiences that you've had and how they have kind of molded you into what you are now and why you'd be a good fit and thinking about how they make you kind of function better within a workplace environment. So um, I'll just briefly talk you through them because um, they are, you know, um, all kind of in front of you anyway, but obviously driven performer is a big one. You know, anyone's going to want to hire someone that's really motivated. It just shows that they're going to do the work that they need to do, um, even if it might be challenging. Uh, logical resolver obviously is quite a big one especially for something maybe more technical where you do need to kind of use a lot of logic to get through certain um, tasks. Opportunity seekers are just people who are willing to go outside of their comfort zones, try new things, they're not going to be put off by you know something that might seem a bit scary at first. Um, adaptable delivery it's all about being flexible you know especially with roles that I mentioned such as technical operations you don't really know what you're going to be doing day to day until it's kind of there in your face and so people who are able to adapt quickly are really going to excel and that's what we look for um, relationship builders I mean this is any job that you have you unless you're a lighthouse keeper you're probably going to have to work with other people and that means that relationship building is incredibly important so again we do keep a keen eye on that uh, curious learner is probably one of the most important. Curiosity is kind of at the heart of the tech industry. Um, it really does kind of drive everything forward. So we always look for candidates that have a natural curiosity, especially for those more technical uh, routes, such as software development and that kind of thing. And then finally, we've got resilient achievers. So, you know, these are people that recover from setbacks. They don't let them, you know, put them off or sway them. They can, you know, deal with the issue that's happened, get over it quickly, and then, you know, keep pushing forward. So uh, these are what we keep a keen eye out for. It won't always be obvious when you're showing these strengths. And that's why we encourage, we do give you a lot of um, support when we are guiding you through the strength-based interview uh, process and make sure that we know that when you're in these interviews, you will be showing that you have these abilities basically and um, so yeah and i think that's it from us for now um if if you're interested in joining the graduate program you can scan the qr code i'm just going to keep it for a few seconds um, and that will show and register for us and um, we will contact you afterwards and um, to start um, the process um but yeah i think um that was it in terms of you know um giving a bit more information about FTM and what we do and um, yeah happy to answer any questions at the end if there are any. That's great thank you so much both of you for your input and also giving us some insight into the recruitment process and what it is that you're looking for from candidates so we have got questions in the chat I am conscious of that I don't want to feel like that I'm ignoring those but what I would like to do is just give uh, Hannah perhaps a chance uh, Christina just to to kind of have another go at sharing their slides. Uh, are we in a position to do that? Oh, amazing. Fabulous. Thanks, Christina. <laughs> okay, so yeah, should we get started? Um, so yeah, hi everyone. Thank you, Penny and Louise, for having us. 
Um, so myself and Christina are going to tell you a bit about IBM, um, what the, ro the roles that we offer and also how to apply and a few tips on how to make your application stand out as well. So who are IBM? Um, we are a global technology company. We've been around for about 110 years this year. Um, so we've got quite a, a long history of innovation. Um, a couple of things that you might have heard about that we've invented. Um, we've invented the barcode, the floppy disk and the ATM. Um, so that's just a bit of our history that you, you've probably heard of those things before. <laughs> um, so our work today is a little bit more modern. Um, we work on many things across the world. Uh, these things include um, artificial intelligence using IBM Watson. And we're doing a lot of work lately with our hybrid cloud infrastructure. So um, very exciting and a lot of opportunities to get involved with this kind of thing, um, which is what, one of the reasons why I like working, working for IBM. And um, so we've got offices based all around the, all around the world. Um, and in the UK, the majority of the roles are based in Hursley, which um, is near to Southampton, if you've not heard of it. Hopefully that answers the question from before as well. Um, so um, we do have other offices in the UK as well, um, such as London and Manchester. Um, there's various other ones, um, but they're, yeah, they're, they're most of the roles are based in Hursley. Um, so on the slide, you can see a couple of the roles that we offer, well, the, all, all of the roles that we offer. Um, we offer various graduate roles in consulting, um, technology and design. So when you join us, you'll become um, a full-time employee and you'll work on real projects with real clients and you'll be supported while you gain experience within the role as well. Um, we've also, we also offer placement roles. Um, which happen between your second and third year of university. And also we offer some summer, inter uh, summer internship as well called Extreme Blue. Um, so all of our roles are currently closed for this year for the 2022 intake, but they will open again um, in the autumn for our 2023 intake. Um, and Christina will tell you a bit about how to um, apply for those in a second. Um, so yeah, all of, all of our roles you can apply to regardless of your degree background. Um, and yeah, I'll pass you over to Christina now who will go through the application process and how to make your application stand out, whether you're from a technical or non-technical background. Yeah, thank you, Hannah. Um, so this slide, we have some basic information on our application process. As you can see from the blue band above, we have basically the standard application process for any grad role. So you'd be sending your application with your CV, you would um, check off a couple of questions on your eligibility. And then if you're successful at that stage, um, there's some online assessments. Um, I, re I still remember mine uh, three years ago now. Um, it was completely fine. Um, and then I actually did it between lectures. Uh, and then you have your application form and a, a manager would review that. And you would go to an assessment center, which actually I think they're not virtual anymore, which is um, quite exciting. And once you've passed that stage, that will lead on, on to matching interviews. And um, this is a one on one um, meeting with the manager. At that point, you could consider yourself a graduate at IBM, but we want to make sure that we allocate you to the right department. Um, so that's what matching interviews are for, for you to let us know where you want your career to um, go towards and also for us to um, understand um, if you have any questions and help you through those. Um, and here at the left, we have um, our eight core competencies. So these are things that we try to look for in applications at every stage of the process. So in uh, during the assessment center, during the matching interviews, and even during your assessments. Um, and for this, we recommend following the STAR method, which I'm sure a lot of you are aware of, but that is basically um, describing a situation, what you were doing, and um, the, the activity and the results from that situation will, uh, was at the same time involving some of these um, competencies that we have listed here. And yeah, just as a final note, uh, we um, we only look for applications that are on track for a two one and 
can be from any degree background. Uh, we do um, expect a right to work in the UK and graduate join IBM at a, as a permanent employee and salary start around 32K. Um, although I think there's differences between um, where you're based. And yeah, just a final slide on how to make your application pop. The main thing we're looking for is that you have a passion for both IBM and technology. And the way we wanna see that reflected is not only by doing your own research and um, learning on your own time, but also giving us examples of when you might've applied um, your passion for technology. Um, so I, got, I guess this uh, relates to the story method that I was describing before. Um, but yeah, um, we, as uh, Penny said earlier, we're more than happy to connect on LinkedIn, answer any questions right now. Um, yeah, thank you for having us. Thank you so much, Christiana and sorry, Christina and Hannah for your input there. And again, giving a really comprehensive view of kind of roles that are available and the recruitment process, which I think is really helpful, actually, if you're at that stage in your career where you are applying or about to apply for graduate roles. Um, it's nice to have a kind of clear idea of what to expect. So thank you both. Uh, for, for sharing that. So we have got some questions in the chat. Um, I'm going to pick these up now if that's okay. Some of them are more directed at, at individuals. So uh, I'm going to start off with, um, can you talk more about the interdisciplinary course? Oh yeah, so I mentioned before about at the university you can actually pick up modules from other, uh, uh, from other programs. So I've actually popped that in the chat. So I hope that's okay for, for that student there. Um, so what skills experience does the ideal candidate have? So this is from uh, Salma. Um, Hannah, do you want to, to respond to that? What sort of skills experience does the ideal candidate have, have to have for, for IBM? Yeah, so um, yeah, I guess the ideal um, experience and skills first would be the curiosity um, to learn, um, the, an interest in technology and the ability to um, just the, the, the keen keenness to learn really. Um, problem solving abilities, regardless of your degree background, um, just you know, the ability to, to um, approach problems um, and solve them. Um, but yeah, ma mainly really the, the ability to, to pick things up and, and, and be keen to learn. Great, fantastic, thanks. And uh, what about with FDM, Christiana? Yeah, um, as Hannah mentioned from about, you know, um, what they uh, most look for, their candidates, it's quite similar for us. Uh, we do understand that the people coming out of university, um, they, wouldn't, they might not have a working experience because obviously you spend a lot of time at uni, um, but that's absolutely fine. Uh, because what we look for is um, essentially those transferable skills from your degrees um, and uh, strengths um, the seven strengths that we put on the slide, that's what we're looking for. Um, so um, as Stefan mentioned, communication skills, something that, you, you know, it's for everyone. That's something that you really need to have. Uh, building relationships, resilience, curious learner, that keen interest to start career in technology, even though you haven't got a previous experience in it, but you really want to start, or you might have already tried to do a bit of coding and you really enjoy it and you want to take that as a career uh, that's what we look for just that key passion and interest in technology and also the transport skills that's great thank you very much can I stick with you if that's okay so Christiana so when you were talking about the two-year graduate program um, with FDM um, Ahmed's asking if there's sponsorship available after that two-year period uh, uh, for international students yeah so in terms of um visa sponsorship so our graduate program is longer than two years so it's a two years of placement opportunity with the client um, and before that it's obviously the six to 14 weeks of training that we provide our consultants with so that makes it a, a bit more than two years and uh, we uh, want to make sure the people coming through the program have the right to work in the UK because fortunately we're not able to provide sponsorship so as long as they have the right to work in the UK for the whole duration of the program they're welcome to apply um, but we're not able to provide sponsorship. That's great, thank you very much. Um, actually, Chris, Christina, could you answer that for IBM? Is there a sponsorship available with? Um, with no, unfortunately we do not offer sponsorships, but IBM does have offices literally everywhere in the world. So yeah. feel free to look at your own 
um, geography and apply there. Great, thank you very much. Now we sort of asked, we've answered this already about the kind of skills that you're looking for, but what about extracurricular activities? What, what stands out or what have you seen perhaps from applicants that you thought, oh, that's really interesting or, you know, or perhaps that really adds to what we're looking for. So you mentioned around the problem solving skills or I'm sort of thinking things like chess or, you know, strategic hobbies, perhaps, that people sort of interested in. Anything that stood out for you when you've been seeing applications or meeting candidates? Um, Stefan, could, could you pick that up? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we go through a lot of, you know, interviews with candidates, and there are some that do crop up more than others. Football stands out in my mind as something that a lot of people do say. I would stress that the more kind of niche it is the more likely we are to remember it that's just a classic thing it doesn't really matter at the end of the day and um, in terms of ex extracurricular things there's nothing in particular that we really look for i mean maybe a little bit for something like software development it's normally helpful that someone in their at least in their spare time maybe has dabbled with coding that kind of thing in terms of really fun extracurricular things that i've heard oh, i think it was the other day what, what was it that he did? He was a kind of um, a role player. So he would reenact historical events. And that's the first time I've had that. And that really stood out. And um, so I do encourage people to, you know, definitely if there's something that you have a real interest in, but maybe you don't always feel like sharing it. Now's the time when you're applying with us because, you know, we hear so many candidates talk about what their interests are so if it's something a bit more niche we're always going to really respond well to that and uh, enjoy it and it's always going to be something really interesting to hear definitely but if, nothing that will affect your application you know if it really is football because for a lot of people it is you can still say that that's absolutely fine that's fair enough it just means that i'll be like <laughs> but, you know yeah. um yeah but it's always interesting to see the kind of things that people do mention yeah, yeah. Th thanks for that, Stefan. And I def that's definitely echoed by other employees, you know, having interesting hobbies, interests just makes you a bit more e easy to read, more interesting. And actually, you never know who's interviewing you. They may share that, that kind of the common interest as well. So do always put hobbies and interests on your CVs if you have time and, and talk about them at interview as well. Um, in terms of kind of preparing for, for interviews and online tests, um, we do have a series of um, resources on the Career Service website. I'm just going to pop in the chat a particular resource called Shortlist Me. Now, this is preparation for video interviews. So anyone who has got an, uh, an upcoming video interview or will be doing an interview as part of that, that kind of application process, please do use that resource. Um, it's there on the website. Um, Hannah, do you have anything in particular with IBM? Is there any practice resources that, that you, the students can access before the real thing? Um, so we have we have badges that we um, that you can take, which um, we have this tool called Skills Build, and um, students are able to sign up. I, I'll send the link afterwards so you can um, you can hopefully share it with the students. But um, yeah, there's technical badges that you can complete, which um, is you can complete a badge in something like um, blockchain or artificial intelligence, any kind of anything really on technology, software development. And this, it will basically take you through a bunch of learning exercises and um, yeah, you get the, the credit at the end with the badge. And um, yeah, we really look for these kinds of things and um, shows that you've taken initiative to, um, to, to show that you're passionate about technology and that you're keen to, keen to learn about it. So I, yeah, I'll share that link with you. Um, but yeah, that's that's the kind of thing that we offer. I'm not sure if you had any other things, Christina. Um, no, we do really encourage everyone to look at um, the resource that Penny just um, listed. Um, again, there's a lot of tips online about how to make sure that you room, the room looks clean, that um, you speak um, loudly that people can understand you. So there's bits and pieces that I'm sure you'll be able to find with some research. Yeah, great, thank you very much. Just conscious we've still got quite a few questions to get through. So um, what made you choose to work for the companies that you work for? So Christiana, could you, could you just quickly answer that? What stood out about FDM? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So for me, it was uh, mainly the business module and the fact that FTM um, helps um, 
like more than like last year, for example, we recruited more than 1000 um, people on the program. So for me, that's a great chance to join that mission of bringing people and helping them to start a career with us and um, giving them that initial start that, you know, kick off, you know, just to help them to uh, make a start in technology. So the fact that we're helping and making an impact for someone else in their career is just really rewarding. And it's also the culture at FTM that is very inclusive, very supportive. And um, that's what that's what actually made me realize, oh, that's the company I want to join and, you know, um, work for that um, and make an impact. So basically it's making the impact as well. Great. Thank you very much. And Christina, could you answer for IBM? What, what attracted you to IBM? Yeah, um, so when I applied, I actually did a bit of research and one of the things that stood out the most to me was um, IBM Health for IBM Watson. And that's one of our um, products um, that we develop uh, with our AI uh, Watson. And there's a lot of different products around oncology and the discovery of drugs that IBM is involved with worldwide and I think that's something that um, since I applied stuck with me and I found it so important just the research we're doing with AI and now with for example quantum computing which I find incredibly interesting so it's just that passion for technology and also like any conversation you have with a true technical person at IBM is so interesting and so inspiring everyone's so passionate about the work they do about um, the technology and the industry so just a really good uh, vibe. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Stefan, um, are you able to apply for multiple roles or schemes with FDM? So when you make your initial application, you can suggest the like which streams that we offer you have interest in. So you can literally choose them all if you want. Uh, throughout the, re the recruitment process is when we will start to kind of whittle those down. The more conversations we have with you, the easier it will be to understand where your best place based on obviously what you want but also you know sometimes you don't always know what it is that you're kind of looking to go for I know that a lot of people who come out of uni and are like I have no idea what I want to do exhibit a so you know it's nice that you can just apply for everything we will give you as much information as you need about each stream and it just means that as we kind of get through the process it kind of funnels through so that eventually you should have a really good idea of which of the streams that we offer is the best fit for you um, in terms of once you're on a program, you are on that one program and that's for the training. Um, once you're on that two years on site with clients, it's not always quite as clear cut, you know, just because you do something in um, technical operations. It could be that when you're on site with clients, you're obviously doing a bit of work in that, but you could be kind of chopping and changing. There could be a bit more, you know, room for maneuver. You could obviously upscale, do like, you know, a few different things. So I don't want candidates to worry that they're pigeonholing themselves in any way by having to only take part in one program, because that's just to make sure that you have the foundations you need to kind of succeed once you are on site with clients and then there is a lot of room for kind of you know looking at you know new opportunities and things that you're interested in and maybe learning a little bit more about you know say you come in for testing but you kind of want to learn more about you know development that's absolutely fine but yeah so we definitely make sure that we try and fit our candidates with what is going to be the best for them and what they want as well. Great, thanks so much, Stefan. And um, is that the same with IBM? Can, can you apply for multiple roles or is it just the one sort of programme that you that the candidates have to select? Uh, Hannah, I don't know if you want to answer that. Um, yeah, so we unfortunately can only apply to one role um, with IBM. So um, yeah, I guess we encourage you to, to research the roles. Um, there's quite a lot of information on our website. And also maybe reach out to people who um, who might be in those particular roles on LinkedIn um, and find out as much as you can to decide which is the best role for you. Um, and also um, it's, yeah, we can, with, with what Christina mentioned earlier with the matching in our interview process, um, we kind of get to know you as a person and try and position you in the best suited um, department for you because there's quite a lot of different departments um, all over the UK that you can get involved in. So yeah, we try and, we try and match you based on your interests. Yeah, um, and, and even in consulting, you might, I, for example, I'm part of the data services uh, department, but I am involved in a project from a different department and I'm currently in a business um, 
consulting role, but I've had technical consulting roles. So um, if you apply to any of our consulting roles, um, you don't need to fit in a box. Like there's so many other things that you can explore and get involved with. Great, thank you very much. I am really conscious of time. So um, no more questions in the chat for the moment. Uh, I have just got a couple more to ask. IBM, it says, when is your 2023 intake? Now, I'm not sure if that's when you start the programme as a graduate or whether that's when applications open. Now you alluded to sort of uh, semester one, didn't you, autumn, the autumn period, is that right? Yeah, so um, our applications will open usually around, around autumn time. Um, so if you register your interest on our website um, for, the, for the role that you're interested in, we will then send you an email where you can, um, where, where we'll tell you when the, the open date is. Um, sure. And our intake is usually, it starts in summer, I think. So um, I think the first graduate intake is in June. It used, it used to be, and I think it still is. <laughs> um, and yeah, that, that is a couple of intakes throughout the, the summer. So June, July, August, um, around that time. Great, lovely. And same for, for Christiana for FDM, please. Um, yeah, I actually so a, uh, a question of, for us uh, about uh, when do we uh, have the 2022 intake? Um, uh, like when when does it finish uh, so basically we recruit all year round um so we have constantly start dates um almost every monday for the different roles um so if you uh, those of you who are on the call and they're in final year so like finishing university already finished university this month or next month um you can apply literally now um for those of you who are graduating next year, 2023, it's a bit too early to apply now, uh, but soon we're going to have a page on our website where you can register an interest for next year. It's just because it's a bit too early for you to uh, start the process now. Uh, but we have, um, like, we recruit all year round and we have constantly start dates uh, for the different roles. So you can apply anytime. Great, thank you so much. I'm just gonna really quickly share my screen while I say thank you to everyone that has contributed today. Thank you for your questions uh, from the students and also a huge thank you to our uh, employer representatives from FDM and I IBM. Um, thank you so much for sharing your insight, uh, your, your advice, your tips, your insider information, and of course your own experiences as well. And if you'd be kind enough now, those that are left, because I'm conscious people have, have dropped out, they probably have lectures to go to, but if you could just spend um, just a short like minute just filling out this questionnaire, and um, Louise will pop that in the chat as well, the bit lead link. Just want to get a sense of how you found the sessions today, if you found it helpful, because um, this does help influence what, what other sessions we run. Um, I say once again, a huge thanks to all our panelists today. And uh, we really hope you found the, the session useful. And of course, if you do want to connect with people on LinkedIn, do that, including myself and Louise. Um, all of our employers today have said they're happy to accept LinkedIn connections. So, so follow up with that firstly. Um, and of course, if you do want to book a, an appointment with the careers team, with myself or one of my colleagues, do get that booked on Career Connect um, as soon as you can, preferably before the summer. OK, we'll finish up there. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, I hope you all enjoy the sunshine. Take care now. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.